Welcome to EdTech Weekly, episode 100. EdTech Weekly is a fast-paced roundup of news and resources from the world of education and technology. We're broadcasting on the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network, and today is October 26, 2008, and this is John Schinker in Stowe, Ohio. This is Dave Cormier in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. This is Jennifer Madrill in Hoboken, New Jersey. And this is Jeff Lebo in Bow, New Hampshire, excited to celebrate the EdTech Weekly 100 extravaganza Woo-hoo. going through our top Woo-hoo. 100 links from the past 100 shows. Okay, so we're going to do 100 links, and we're going to do it in under an hour. So uh, we're going to do this nice and fast. I'm going to start off right away. My first link, uh, favorite link in the blah, 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 this is to OL Daily, to our good buddy Stephen Downs for all of the links we've stolen from him over the last two and a half years. It is the best repository for news and education and technology on the Internet. So I had to start off with Steve. I'm done. Excellent. Okay, I changed my link because I wanted to uh, be able to talk about my favorite. I didn't mention it. I have my first one, but my first no now is Jane Hart. I think we've probably gotten, um, I don't know, even know how many links out of our 5,000 from her. So if you've never look, gone uh, over to Jane Hart and seen her top 100 um, tools, click on this link and give it a try. All right. And I am going to start off with Pro Profs, the quiz school. It's a great way to make online quizzes. And I, in order to celebrate EdTech Weekly, I even created a special uh, EdTech Weekly quiz using Pro Profs. Ooh. All right. Wow. My, fir- <clears throat> my first link is, uh, in the interest of self-promotion, a link from my <laughs> blog, which is uh, how I got into this mess. Um, a couple years ago, I posted a comment on my blog about EdTech Weekly and how what a wonderful show it was and how much better it was than that old EdTech talk show. And that started this whole discussion about fast paced and about groundbreaking. And that's pretty much why I'm here. Uh, That's where we're starting. John killed EdTech talk. This is to the software I've had the most use with over the last year. It's called Open Simulator. It is a replacement, an open source alternative to Second Life. It is rock solid, and this is to the main page. I love it, and you should love it, too. Go check it out if you have any interest in using virtual worlds and want to have any kind of privacy whatsoever. Taz. All right. My next link is Scribed, or Scribd, depending on how you care to pronounce it. And the idea here is you upload your Word documents or PDFs and share them with the world in a very nice, user-friendly format. If you haven't tried it, give it a try. Scribd, S-C-R-I-B-D dot com. All right. I'm feeling a little bit stressed here. I feel like people are hurrying unnecessarily. 30 seconds is, you know, a fair amount of time. I've only used seven seconds of mine. Now I'm going to tell you about uh, TED, where you can find awesome videos and audio audio and video of presentations um, all about ideas. Uh, Everybody from Al Gore to futurists to uh, people cooler than Al Gore. Uh, Highly (laughs) recommend it. (laughs) TED.com. And I'm going to continue with Skype, skype Skype.com, because uh, really none of this stuff would work without Skype. It's it's just amazing software. Um, We have often talked about, you know, how it would be nice to have more than one player in this in this world, that it would be good to have competition for Skype because there's some things about it that we don't like. But really, it's it's very reliable software and we rely on it to talk to each other and to talk to everybody out there. And webcasting would be a huge pain without it. Skype.com. Those guys rock. A uh, bit of a right turn on us here. This is to the Smart Strip LCG3 auto switching technology. It is a recent link that I've just found, and what it does is it reads your computer, and when it goes to sleep or goes to hibernate, it turns off all of your peripherals. It senses the amount of power being pulled out, and it is probably the most important greening technology that we can put into any of our computer labs, into our office, and anything else. And I just think it rocks. I think it's very, very cool. I've got one in the mail right now. Wow, I don't remember that one. Yay, yeah, Earth. I cheated. Uh-huh. Oh. Uh-huh. Okay, that's okay. All right, my next link is uh, to Zotero, Z-O-T-E-R-O dot com. It's actually a Firefox extension. We talked about it a couple times. It is um, very much like EndNote, if you've ever used that, to document references when you're collecting resources on the Internet and uh, turning them into references and bibliographies on a paper. So if you have to do that stuff, as I do every single day, Zotero will change your life. 
And there are many video sharing sites like YouTube and Blip and Rever, and many of them are very good in their own special way. The only one I'm including on this list is .sub.com because they do a wonderful job of um, providing subtitles. It works like Wikipedia. People can do their own uh, translations in however many languages it supports. Um, and it's great for language teaching and for uh, globalizing videos that are in people's non-native language. All right, Dave, Jeff, what was the topic for the first EdTech Talk? Uh, Moodle? I'm Moodle. We've talked about oh. Moodle a ton of times. There were um, all kinds of discussions, especially with the Blackboard patent issue. Um, and Moodle is is software for a learning management system. If you want to teach online, uh, it's a good way to organize things. Uh, it's also great for blended courses. If you want to uh, incorporate uh, an online component to an existing face-to-face -face class, you want kids to or, or students to submit things electronically or participate in discussions and all work in a closed environment, um, Moodle's a great, great way to go. The link that I put in there is a discussion about how Moodle or a blog post about how Moodle changed a school and changed how teachers approach teaching and how students learn. Good stuff. This is number 13 and this is for the We Are Media project which I talked about in the summertime. It is a really really good example of what a group of people can do when they get together to try to figure out how to use technology and an educational concept for their own discipline. This is for nonprofits. It is a super nice good thing to check out. It is a great project being run by some really cool nonprofits out in California and run by Beth Cantor. If you are interested in having a new media curriculum that you want to use for any kind of company or, or even inside your school, this is definitely something you should check out. WeAreMedia.org. Okay, my next link is for Mebo.com. It is a web-based IM client and it helps you aggregate all those IM accounts that you've set up over the years, AIM, Yahoo, Google, all those that you've set up over the years, MSN, and uh, you're able to chat with all your buddies on your browser. No software to download and it's awesome. So Mebo.com. And if we could figure out a way to enlarge text in the embedded version of Mebo Chat, we'd probably be using that for our chat instead of add-on chat. Um, my next link is pipes.yahoo.com. And pipes. this is uh, a great way to aggregate different feeds, to mess around with them, to uh, uh, take a whole bunch and filter and do all sorts of cool things. I use this to bring in all sorts of different kinds of content into assorted Drupals and other sites pipes.yahoo.com the long tail we've talked a lot about the long oh, tail yeah. and about mm -hmm. how everything fits out there on the tail because publishing now is so easy to do and so inexpensive that anybody can can put something out there and even if there's a very small audience for it because the barrier to entry is so low we can have all kinds of specialized discussions and that that's one of the things that makes this community work it's one of the things that makes blogging work because you you have some audience or you may have some audience there uh, the article in there is a wired article by Chris Anderson, which was written in 2004, which was two years before the book came out. Um, just a great concept and, and one that, that uh, certainly means a lot to this community. I wish I could explain things like that, man. Uh, this is from a member of our community. It is a collaborative wiki that was built by somebody's classroom. His name is Alec Kuros. He works at the University of Regina, I think it is. And this was uh, collaboratively built by his master's students. It is a great resource and a great sort of um, a great path to follow. If you're looking, if you think that your students can go and build a repository or you're wondering how that's done during the course of a project, this is the model to go look at. It's done by Alakuros and is uber cool. Go check it out. T4TL.wikispaces.com. All right. Well, I see Kathy um, Avenoff has come back into the chat room, so this is a little shout-out to Kathy. I believe she's the one that brought this to our attention. It's a, a web-based whiteboard tool called Scribble, S-K-R-B-L.com. It is great. Uh, what was that, about 18 months ago or so, Jeff? We tried a little um, exercise on it. I think we had Doug on the call and Lee Baber and some other folks. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of fun trying it out in, like, a classroom-type setting, um, giving a little demo on the Internet, and it was awesome little tool. So if you need a whiteboard and you don't want to download some software, you can just go over to skrbl.com and find a web-based whiteboard. 
And I didn't know if I was going to do this first or last, but since you mentioned Lee, uh, I think this definitely mm -hmm. belongs in our top 100. Uh, mm -hmm. Lee Baber, who was around for EdTech Weekly Zero. I think we overlapped with dinner time because she usually stopped by uh, toward the end, but you can see her in many chat logs and was just a tremendously valued member of the community and um, who passed away a few months ago and taught us all uh, um, that virtual communities are very real and uh, the connections that we make are as well. Uh, she's left a tremendous online legacy. This page links to uh, a number of her sites and projects. I added a link to her de delicious bookmarks uh, and you can, it, she did a great job with her delicious and it's kind of a, a history of many of the resources we all used. Uh, we remember mm. you, we miss you and um, we think of you often, Lee. We miss you, Lee. Um, top 10 Google's shortcut search shortcut tips. Um, we've talked a lot about Google. We use Google all the time. Um, the most common thing we use Google for is searching, and it's amazing how many people don't know how to, to take full advantage of that little search box that you can search by a particular site, or you can look for uh, d particular kinds of documents, or um, just simple things about how to search for phrases. Um, all of the really simple um, tips for getting better results from your searches are in that blog post. This is uh, my favorite of all the OLPC links that I talked about over the last couple of years. It gives you the good, mm. the bad, and the ugly of the OLPC project, in this case in Haiti. I think it does a nice, even job of showing the good things that can be done with that kind of project and certainly some of the oversights that are involved in it. If you're looking for one post that's going to give you a sense of what OLPC has been doing in the two, last two years, I think this is the one to read. Okay, I can't believe it took us two into the 20s to come up with this one, but um, here's Twitter.com. I think this has been one of the little pieces of technology that's probably changed our universe the most. Uh, we mentioned Skype before, um, but certainly Twitter is that uh, ever-present uh, tool that we're able to see what each other is up to and communicate, and I don't know where we'd be without Twitter. So if you haven't tried Twitter, which I can't imagine, Twitter.com. And I keep changing my links to try to be to try to have a segue after Jen's. Um, my favorite Twitter tool and the one that has really allowed me to uh, make Twitter more usable in my life is TweetDeck. And uh, the thing I like most about it is it allows you to sort all of your the people you follow into different groups. And you can also search for, for replies or certain uh, search terms. So for me, it has made Twitter much more digestible. All right, so the second of my two Google links, because I'm not even going to try to segue from what Jeff is doing, um, is google.com slash educators, which is a list of resources for teachers using Google. They really have gone out of their way to try to embrace the education market between um, Google educators and uh, Google Docs, Google for Education, um, all kinds of resources that Google provides for teachers, and it's all free, and it's all ad-free, or most of it's ad-free. Um, I, too, am going to um, just not even bother trying to segue. This is from Dangerously Irrelevant. It is a post on cell phones in the classroom and kids using the video on the cell phone to be able to record what's going on in those classrooms and whether or not that's a good idea. I think overall, it's, again, a nice even-handed post to give you a sense of where that topic is. The videos are, are really, really a compelling argument in terms of um, given a fair sense of, of what, how important that issue really is. So uh, do check it out. Do watch some of the video. Uh, some of it's fairly graphic, but there you go. And, oh, it's not my turn. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my uh, next link is for another Firefox add-on. I just mentioned uh, one before, but this one is for Scribefire. And I use this as my blogging tool. And again, it's a Firefox add-on. You can set it up to automatically post to your blog. A nice little interface uh, sits there at the bottom tray on your browser. You click on it, type what you want, and hit enter, and populates to your blog. Very nice little option. And uh, if you'd like to try it out, it's at scribefire.com. Now it's my turn, and because new <laughs> is not always better, <laughs> File Hippo. Uh, this archives many um, old files, and I find that sometimes. The improvements in programs do not make them better. And so if you're thinking, oh, I wish I had version 3.3 .3 instead of version 5.8, you can find it here at filehippo.com. 
I've often referred to WordPress as the best software ever written. Um, it's it's software that makes it as easy to post things online as it is to write an email. Uh, it just works. It it has a tremendous amount of scalability um, and flexibility. It can be used for all kinds of different things. But um, just about everybody I know who blogs uses WordPress to do it, and uh, most of those people are happy with it. WordPress.org for the uh, downloadable version, WordPress.com for the uh, hosted version. Go ahead, Dave. One, one more link that addresses the technology and also the social implications of it. This is for Facebook, and this is on the Ryerson student who's fighting being called a cheater for using a Facebook as a study group. Um, it's another big issue inside the industry, and I think that Facebook's certainly become important in terms of what we're doing, and this kind of issue is one that goes right to the heart of what we mean by education right now. It's, uh, it nicely lays out the issue. Again, it's pretty fair, and it addresses whether or not working together collaboratively in a social environment is cheating or smart. And obviously, by my tone, you know which one I think it is. It is a great hmm. article. Okay, maybe now is a good time to... Uh, post one that maybe we'll get a tad bit of discussion on. I'm putting in my favorite RSS aggregator. It's Google Reader. I know the others in the group have different opinions. Anybody want to jump on and talk about what your favorite RSS aggregator is? Twitter. RSS <laughs> <aggregator>? <laughs> Google Reader. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still using Thunderbird. And don't, don't you like, uh, what do you like, Jeff or um, Dave? I use Net5s. Net5s. Okay, Jeff. Okay, that was a discussion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we are two minutes ahead of schedule, so we had time for a little chit chat uh, or a little break, catch <laughs> our breath. Not much to say. Okay. Uh, I, will, I can break in here since you you want to. You know, burn a couple minutes here. One uh, one thing that we should point out is that all of these are going to be in our delicious, and we'll give you that link at the end of the show. But you know, if people are trying to write stuff down or follow these links as we're going through them. You, you don't have nearly enough time for the page to load, let alone time to to look at them. So, you know, just kind of listen now and then go back to the delicious links later. Go ahead, Jeff. Because the internet is a dangerous place, AVG, uh, a virus pro software that is free. It works. I, I have not had any security issue uh, since I've started using it years ago. Um, it stays updated. AVG, yay. yay. We've had a lot of discussion about wikis over the last two and a half years. Um, a lot of that centering around teachers being uh, kind of unhappy that this is something that anybody can edit. Therefore, you can't really determine the reliability of it. Um, Wikipedia itself has uh, recommendations for academic use, which are uh, on the Wikipedia site. Basically, they're saying that you shouldn't be citing Wikipedia as a source where your uh, research papers, but you could use it as a starting place. And it typically will have links to other sources that uh, um, you can validate the information from. Bah, on Wikipedia haters. Yeah. My next link is to the best titled article this year, Minds on Fire. Uh, it was not nearly as influential as I expected it was going to be, but it still is a very good article and gives a nice discussion of how education is changing by uh, uh, John Seeley Brown, one of the best in the business in terms of being able to take really stupidly complex concepts and making them easy to understand. So do check it out. Um, if you haven't read Minds on Fire, at least go and look at it and go, wow, nice title. Okay, well, I'm following up Jeff from two people ago, and my favorite <laughs> antivirus is uh, software is Kaspersky. It's not free. I have tried Jeff's, and what was yours again? ABG? I, is that what it's called? ABG? Yep. ABG. And I like it, but I... I very much like Kaspersky as well. So K A S P E R S K Y dot com. And it's free. It is not free. Oh. It is not free. It's a it's a modest fee per year, but uh, it does the job, and uh, no bad things have happened. That's Jeff. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I get so engaged in the chat room, you know. Like um, dating, right? In the world of user generated content and teachers who produce content. Uh, this is one of my faves. Uh, the Daily English Show, produced by Sarah, I don't even know her last name. Uh, and the link to this episode that I'm putting in is how she produces this. I think she's up to episode 800 or something. She does this almost every day. It's a two to three minute um, thing for ESL, for non-native speakers to learn English from. She uses lots of... Uh, 
pop culture content. I applaud her efforts, and uh, you can find it at the Daily English Show dot com. All right. Over the last couple of years, we've talked a lot about little laptops from the OLPC project that we've had a kind of a love hate relationship with to uh, the Asus EPC to the Classmate and all of the other devices that came after those. Um, and the bottom line is that they work in schools. If you if you uh, understand what they can do and what they can't do and you have realistic expectations, uh, they work well and they're affordable and they can really help you get to uh, closer to a one-to-one -one program. Um, the link that I put in is a link to a success story about a, a school that's using them. Um, little laptops uh, have the capacity to change a lot of things in education. Uh, my next link is to one of my favorite all-time dudes. This is the You Suck at Photoshop guy. And this is <laughs> this is really a fantastic tutorial of Photoshop. It's a little irreverent, a little, you know, watch your... Be careful in terms of listening to it if you're very sensitive, but wow, oh wow, is it a really good tutorial. I, I went through these and I swear my Photoshop ability doubled. Uh, so a really nice model of what can be done and a really entertaining uh, tutorial at that. I don't remember that one either, but that's a good one. That one we did do. I didn't okay. cheat that time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I think this next one might be a shout-out to uh, Jen Wagner in the chat room. I think she's the one that uh, turned us on to this one. But if you're looking for a mind mapping uh, tool that you can use in your browser, again, no download, Bubbleus. I love it. I use it a lot. It's for concept mapping, B-U-B-B-L dot U-S. Very, very nice tool. And my favorite YouTube video, I think, of all time is Amanda's story, which I did not properly paste into the chat room. It is uh, the story of an autistic woman who was barely able to communicate, but produced this YouTube video, uh, the first half kind of in her, what she considers her native language, and then subtitled, it is uh, just a fascinating look at how some people see the world and did more for my understanding of autism and special needs than anything I've ever experienced. All right. Addictomatic is a really cool search tool that uh, something we talked about, I think, last spring. Um, basically, you type in a search term, and it goes out, and it searches YouTube for videos. It searches the web. It searches uh, blogs. It searches Flickr, and it gives you all of those results on a single page, tells you where they came from, um, and you can choose like which uh, types of services it searches, but gives you all those results on one page. It's kind of neat. My next link is the second time we've linked to this person's blog today. This is from John Schinker once again. This is the 21st Century Illiteracy Post, which I think was one of the most entertaining posts I read this year. <laughs> um, it <laughs> expresses the frustration of a poor ed tech dude, and people tell him they don't know how to do stuff. I think a lot of people reading this will be sympathetic, and some people will think John's a whiner person. Whiner is another good word for that. Uh, but uh, I loved it, and I just thought I'd throw it in there. There were some people who were surprised I didn't get fired over that post. And, <laughs> <It was wonderful. laughs> and for those keeping scores, John 2, Dave 0, Jen 0, Jeff 0. Go ahead. <laughs> you posted yourself once. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, my next link is for an external hard drive that I actually got a year ago Christmas. And given that these things are such moving targets with um, – more and more capacity at every turn. The link may, there may be better op options out there, but I certainly love mine. It's the Maxter One Touch 4 Mini. Very, very small, about the size of a deck of cards, and you can get them now up to 320 gigs. Um, and I believe John or Dave maybe last week had, a, uh, had some links on how you should be regularly backing up your data. So here's a second reminder in, a, in less than a week, or I guess just add a week of the importance of backing up your data. So if you haven't done it, run out and buy one of these and back up your data. And Internet Good is uh, opencongress.org. They are working on publishing everything that's happening. And I, sorry again for being U.S.-centric, but they have every bill that goes through the U.S. Congress, and it's a place where people can post their opinions and offer feedback and post alternatives. It is trying to bring the open source collaborative spirit to government, and I think that's a good thing, opencongress.org. 
All right, ProtoPage uh, at ProtoPage.com is a site for developing portals. Basically, uh, it's similar to a lot of the other services, except that you have complete control over where things go. You can put sticky notes there. You can put RSS feeds, uh, search boxes for just about anything you want. Um, you can post pictures, and you can resize everything. You can make it private. You can make it public. You can have multiple tabs. It's just really cool for individual projects or for a default homepage or whatever you need it for. ProtoPage.com. Cool. My next link is to Drupal, which we haven't actually talked about yet, but I love as an educational tool and I use for everything. This is to Lullabot, the Drupal dudes. Uh, they are the folks in terms of Drupal when it comes to that. Uh, and this is their talking about how Drupal 6 works. Again, for all those people out there who think Drupal is fantastic, it is, but it ain't easy. It'll take some time, uh, but wow, oh, wow, is it powerful software if you tweak it long enough. Yay, Drupal. Here, here. And for anyone who happened to miss my 750 links on PDF software, here is what ends up being <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite solution, Bluebeam.com. And for $30, you can get the education version. I have Acrobat, and I've compared them quite extensively. And I think Bluebeam does a superior job at a much, much lower price. Again, the ability to annotate not only just to create um, PDFs or to view them, but also to do all kinds of cool things with them, especially if you have a tablet PC. You can do all sorts of cool, amazing things. So bluebeam.com. You know, one of my students asked about PDFs, and I said, you know, I happen to know a PDF expert. <laughs> Go to delicious.com slash edtechtalk slash PDF, and there's every PDF resource you could ever want. That's ever been created. Ustream.tv. It's hard to imagine, boys and girls, but once upon a time, you weren't able to watch live streams from conferences. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has changed a lot of things and uh, certainly made the job of webcasting easier in some ways. Um, came along, hard to believe it, less than two years ago or about two years ago, and um, it's become a great major tool in the EdTech universe. Uh, get to watch conferences, listen to webcasts. We're using it right now, although people are having some audio issues, and if they are, I just want to mention we are also streaming on EdTech Talk B uh, at a lower bandwidth. All right. Uh, speaking of conferences, you used to have to go to conferences um, as opposed to participating online. K-12 online conference started. This is uh, their third year they're going on. It's going on right now uh, at k12onlineconference.org. Um, and the conversation continues. You the, you participate by watching the sessions as they're posted each day. You can participate in chats. You can blog about it. You can um, basically attend the conference without attending the conference. And it's changed the way a lot of people look at professional development. Okay. My next one is another cheated link that went in today. Uh, this is... <laughs> I didn't realize we had all these rules and the things we were supposed to do. Uh, this is So You Want to Be an E-Learning Consultant. It's in E-Learn Magazine. It was written by our good buddy Harold Jarkey. And it really pretty much tells you everything you ever need to know about being an e-learning consultant. It is a fantastic little article and an introduction, I think, that a lot of people out there who, whether or not they're looking at doing consulting on the side or talking about doing it full time, will be really, really well served by reading. It gives you... Um, how much people are paid, the whole deal. It's very, very good. Yay, Harold Jarkey. All right. We had a couple links before Dave on presentations, and so that reminded me I had this one in here. It's for garreynolds.com, G-A-R-R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S.com. And uh, we referred to his blog many times. He um, has lots of great presentation tips to get away from the death by PowerPoint presentation. And uh, he also has a great book, which I purchased, called Presentation Zen. It just takes all the stuff that's in your head and you're thinking about and helps you to get it down to the most important things and in a presentation format that is easy for your audience to endure as you're giving your presentation. So GarReynolds.com. In a world where there's too much audio to listen to, uh, I'm glad every zing exists. Uh, this allows you to search the content of audio and video. You can post it on EdTech Talk. You'll, there's a little widget where you can search all of EdTech Talk's audio. Uh, there are other things like PodScope. I believe Google is starting to get into this space. But rather than having to listen to you know a million hours of audio, you can just search it and hopefully find what you're looking for. Thank you, NSA. 
I think they were in the development. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, right. 15 coolest Firefox tricks ever. Uh, I use Firefox all the time, and I, I think uh, a lot of us do. And it's just, just such a customizable browser that you can make it do what you need it to do. And there are lots of, of tricks for getting the most out of it, and uh, that, that post has many of them in it. You can do all kinds of customized uh, searches and, and setting things up so that it, your browser works just the way you want it and uh, does all the stuff Chrome does, too. Uh, oh, no. My doesn't let you link... move a tab the way Chrome does. You can just and... grab the tab and move it. Into another window? I don't know. Who uses more than one window? <laughs> <laughs> My next link is to the CCK08 online conf uh, course. It is a course that had 2,250 people register to it. Not nearly that many participating currently, but certainly a landmark, I think, in terms of at least my understanding of the community, and certainly well worth checking out how that's going uh, from the point of view of what it means to have an open course and what it means for that course to be massive and online. So um, something to follow and, and a big, big thing, I think, in the last uh, few months. Okay, uh, the next link I'm putting in, I think we talked about back in June from Sharon when she was, what, didn't Sharon head down to Africa? <laughs> Isn't that where she went? And took with her <laughs> yes. her USB um, flash drive and loaded it up with a bunch of portable apps. And uh, the link here is portableapps.com if you'd like to know how she did it and what types of things you can load up on your USB drive. The idea being you can take uh, take your show on the road and move from computer to computer with just your flash drive and take all your favorite applications with you. Big serious hug for this one. Jingproject.com uh, has made screencasting so, so easy and painless. It is great for not only for capturing five-minute maximum videos of your uh, desktop, but also for images. It's a really nice, easy way for troubleshooting and to put little arrows and point to what you need to uh, use it almost every day. I love it. Jingproject.com. And it's free. And it's Mac and it's Windows. Seven things you should know about just about everything from Educause. They have a, a series of PDFs. Each one is two pages and just explains everything you need to know about the basics of any of these interactive web technologies. So if you are introducing, say, uh, uh, social networking or you're introducing blogging or you're introducing uh, delicious to a group of teachers and they really like to have a handout or something that explains exactly what this is uh, this is a great site to go to 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 find those things there uh, well explained in uh, just two pages that that tell you everything you need to know cool uh, my next link is to the tool I probably use more than anything else it's called VLC it is the absolutely handy dandy pocket knife tool for anything audio or video you want to do on top of your computer. It works in Mac, it works with PC, it works on Linux. It'd probably work in your kitchen sink if you really wanted it to. It just turns on, it'll play anything, it won't ask you for codecs. Absolutely right now, download VLC and use it on your computer. I would never use anything else. Yay, VLC. Yay. Okay, here is um Unfortunately, a little uh, thing I have to run <laughs> pretty often with my little Windows system, but unfortunately, as we've talked about before, the old Microsoft folks tend to bury these handy-dandy little tools. So if you've got junk in your computer's trunk and you need to clean out the registry and things are sluggish, give this a try. It's at onecare.live.com, and it's the little cleanup thing. It's like a little broom. Click on that, and it runs in about five minutes, and believe it or not, it will really speed things up. Can I run that right now? Will it blow up my computer? It might. I don't know. <laughs> is, it shouldn't blow your computer up. It's is just, it as you good know as... what you do have to do, though, is open it up in Internet Explorer, which usually I forget where I've hidden the, <laughs> the links in Internet Explorer. I'm shocked. Microsoft forces you to use one of their products? I know. Crazy. Is it as good as PCDCrapifier.com? I almost included yeah. that just because it was my favorite name of all of our links. Oh, yeah. It's a good name. I have been accused of being a fanboy for these folks. Uh, and I'm a fan. Boy. I'm not a 100% fan because it's just, it's the kind of thing that's doing something that I don't see done elsewhere. And as a result, it's not everything we want it to be. But voicethread.com is a great way to upload presentations and facilitate discussions around them. Uh, I noticed that they're being, this, they're being used this year for K-12 online conference. I think every presentation 
there are thousands and thousands of them out there. Uh, it's still got some evolving to do, but because I don't see many competitors in this space, voicethread.com. All right. And last round, I talked about resources for professional development, and mm. no, no list like that can be complete without the Common Craft Show, which is... Got to them before uh, the, I did. <laughs> the the low-tech uh, low explanations, again, of all of these uh, interactive web technologies. It's the guy with the Sharpie and the paper and, and uh, just explaining how all of this stuff works in a couple minutes in a video. Um, very entertaining, but also informative, and I use that to, to start lots of professional development sessions. CommonCraft.com. This uh, is a link to some tutorials for using OpenOffice. Again, I use OpenOffice for everything. I have free Word and WordPerfect at school, and I keep them off my computer. If you're careful with it, it'll do almost everything you want it to do. And here's some tutorials to go check it out. It's free. It works great. It integrates with other things. It allows you to do pretty much everything you're going to need to do with any kind of on-top Office program, and you don't have to use annoying formats that nobody else can read. Yay, yeah, yeah. open office. No school should ever pay for Microsoft Office. No nope. waste of money. Yep. Okay, here is a link that actually I saw today was posted back December 17th, 2007, and we just started using it, but MeBeam.com. <laughs> we haven't talked about MeBeam yet, have we? I know these are going to start <laughs> seeming like they're overlapping at this time. But um, it's what uh, we... Well, I'm not using it now, but we uh, have been using it in the last few weeks to be able to show our pretty little faces as we're uh, using Skype for the audio. So it's a nice little tool for adding video, a video component to your conference calls. And I don't know if this is the best in class anymore. It was kind of the first prominent one in class, SlideShare.net, specifically slide casting, which allows you to add audio to any presentation. There are more and more sites that allow you to do this, like Slideboom and a bunch of others. Um, but because they're the first and they have probably the most out there, uh, they get included slideshare.net. OK, I like. Uh, resources that solve two problems at the same time and recapture is one of those. Um, basically the idea is that um, reading text is a difficult thing for computers to do and when you you take a printed document and you try to digitize it sometimes they have trouble with some of the words because you know the ink will run together between various letters and it can't decipher what that is. Well that makes a perfect test to see whether a person is a human so um, a lot of those sites that have the the goofy scrambled letters that you have to to type in um, can use these images from actual documents that are being scanned and that's what recapture does so it gives you actual uh, images that have been scanned and, and after a significant number of people um, type in what they think those are then they use that um, and move on to other ones so you're actually in the process of entering these captchas uh, helping to digitize work two problems one solution cool stuff that is a good thing. Uh, my next link is really about YouTube generally. I mean, it gets a lot of trash talk put towards it because there are things on it that aren't good, that are dangerous for the classroom, whatever that's supposed to mean. But wow, oh wow, there are a lot of really great resources on that. This is one about anti-cyberbullying, which is something that I didn't really find another article that I like better than this one, but I wanted to have some cyberbullying stuff in here. Uh, there's a lot of really good stuff work being done. This is a good video that you can actually use. Uh, inside of like training sessions and stuff uh, but a really important issue and another again where you can just find it on YouTube and if you spend enough time there pretty much videos to do any of the things that you need to do will be there yeah YouTube okay um, here's a link to everything you wanted to teach about particip participatory learning uh, but didn't know where to find. Uh, if you go to this link, it's from Curtis Bonk, and he's aggregated gazoodles and gazoodles of links on Web 2.0, even though we all hate that term. But um, Curtis all Bonk, the different never heard tools. Of him. What's that? Curtis Bonk, never heard of him. Yep, well, <laughs> now you know. <laughs> um, it's <laughs> it's um, not only just links to stuff like we're talking about now, but also some research papers and studies that are going on and cool things like that. So check it out. It's actually the syllabus he's using this fall, 2008. Yeah, anytime you're looking for any online resources for your course, he's got, he's a place, he's the place to go. He's listed. Um, there's this program that people use for like downloading their audio that I'm not really a big fan of, but I am a big fan of this alternative called Get Miro. 
It allows you to subscribe to video and audio podcasts and download them in a way that makes sense and doesn't take over your computer and is not evil like some other programs. iTunes. <laughs> For example. Uh, <laughs> Get Miro is it's open source. It's everything we like. Uh, it's relatively light. GetMiro.com. And the product's called Miro, right? Yes. GetMiro.com is the, the That's website. correct. Cool. Thanks. And another one of those sites that solves two problems by using one solution is free rice, which is uh, something I was reminded of just by listening to the Seedlings show uh, last week. And basically the site is uh, traditionally was a, uh, a site where you go and you take um, vocabulary tests. They give you a, a word and you have to, to pick the correct definition. And because they show ads on the site, you are actually feeding the hungry through the UN World Food Program, and they're paying for that through the ads on the page. Um, and you earn 20 grains of rice for each uh, correct answer that you get. And they've kind of expanded that now. They're showing famous paintings that you have to identify, chemical symbols, um, English grammar and vocabulary. They have language learning for uh, several European languages. They have multiplication tables. Um, freerice.com, kind of a neat site. Maybe I'm just a stick in the mud, but why don't they just give them the rice anyway? <laughs> I don't know. Well, then, then what's the incentive to actually read the questions, Dave? My, just give them the rice. Why need incentive? The next link that I have is to the Wiimote, which is one of those things that we've got four or five different links in the in the delicious account about this, but somebody figured out that if you take a Wii and you point at a wall in just a certain way, you can turn it into an interactive whiteboard. And it's a really cool idea. It's one of those things where you see a technologist sort of sitting down and figuring out new cool ways of using existing tools. The Wiis are fantastic anyway, but the Wiimote, I mean, geez, what else would you want? It's awesome. Yay, whiteboards. Yahoo. All right. On my theme of syllabi, here is one from the class I took last fall, Open Education, with uh, David Wiley, now at BYU. It was one of the first classes of its type that I'd seen where folks from all around the globe came to participate and discuss a certain topic. This topic happened to be open education. Great roundup of links, and um, check it out. And also a great roundup of bloggers that were participating in the class, and you can see who's talking about this topic and, and follow what they're doing. Very cool. Cool class and cool concept. All right. For those who want to make quizzes and other activities, um, and don't want to use an online service. They want to either host it locally or be able to save it. Uh, xlearning.org is what I'm recommending for now. Hot Potatoes has been around for years and is probably easier to use. X learning, e learning has a bit more of a learning curve, but is more sophisticated. Um, so, exelearning.org. We've talked a lot about copyright over the last couple of years. We've talked a lot about DRM and about the RIAA and about a lot of legal issues. Um, and basically what it comes down to for a lot of teachers is that they're not sure what they can use legally and what they can't use legally. Um, and a lot of students get shortchanged because of that, because I, I think in a lot of cases, uh, Teachers tend to not use resources uh, when they're in doubt about whether it's legal to do so. Uh, mediafestival.com or .org slash copyright chart uh, is a copyright chart that tells teachers exactly what they can use and what they can't use. Um, and that it has references for each of the sites or each of the items in the list there um, to explain them and why you can use them, why you can't use them. Good resource. I mentioned uh, NetVibes earlier, but I'm going to post it in anyway. Uh, I use NetVibes for my RSS reading, and you can also, and here's another link that I'll throw in too, because people are starting to do this more and more. They're using it as their website for their project coordination stuff. It can be really useful. I think it's the best of breed in terms of that. Other people disagree with me. It does all the stuff that John described ProtoPage does, except it does it better. Um, yay, NetVibes. Aha. Gauntlet thrown. Mm. <laughs> All right. I talked a moment ago about open education. A lot of the folks that had articles that were linked in the syllabus that I just put in the chat room uh, on my last turn uh, turned around and added chapters for this free book put out by MIT Press called Opening Up Education. You can download a PDF of the entire book, or if you'd like to read a hard copy, you can purchase it for a nominal printing fee. Um, so that's Opening Up Education. Another tool I use every day, 7-Zip. 
at 7-zip.org meets all my compression and decompression needs. You don't need to buy WinZip or anything else. It just works. It even uncompresses RARs. RAR. RAR. Uh, <laughs> accessing a lot of video online. We go to YouTube and we have a video, but YouTube's blocked at school and we can't. So we have to find some way of saving these flash video files. Um, Zam, we, Zamzar is the way I do it usually. Uh, go to the site, give them a URL of a video file or upload a file. You can convert it from just about any format to just about any other format. Uh, then it emails you a link to the file. Uh, there are lots of solutions for doing this. That's just the one that I tend to use um, by default and works pretty well. Cool. Um, this is a link to PLE diagrams. Uh, personal learning environments are stuff that it's been a uh, people talk about a lot. There's a lot of stuff going on in the industry. Uh, EdTech Post they put together the whole friggin' list of all of them. So you can go in and there's about 35 different PLE diagrams there, and there's the whole industry right there in a, in a nutshell. And to give you a real sense of what different people are thinking about how people should be combining their learning, putting the pieces together, and how they're going forward with uh, design and, and development of the PLE industry. So a really great page, I think, and really uh, all the introduction you need to the PLE world. Okay, here's another hidden tool from Microsoft, which I've started using probably in the last six months or so, and I'm loving it. It's called Folder Share. So if you have certain documents that you want to be able to take from home and uh, wherever you're at, but you'd like to be able to also quickly synchronize them, it does it through the interweb tubes back there in the dusty, crawly, <laughs> creepy, crawly spaces of the interweb. Your files are, I don't know, hanging out there, and then wherever you are, you can go in and snag them. Um, it's free, so um, you can check it out. And again, foldershare.com. Fangirl. 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 Everybody knows about Wikipedia, but what about for those who find Wikipedia articles too long and boring? Jeff. Simple. <laughs> just edit them and take out all the long boring stuff <laughs> or <laughs> go to simple.wikipedia.org which uh, is good for younger readers or non-native speaking readers or those with short attention spans like myself simple.wikipedia.org all right send you it um is a site for sending files to people. Basically, email was developed before attachments, and it's really not designed to handle, handle attachments very well. So if you have a 10 meg file you want to send somebody, attaching it to an email is probably the worst way in the world to do it. Um, send you it, you go to the website, you upload a file, and it gives you uh, a URL to that file, and that's good for anywhere from you know half an hour to two weeks, and you can send that link to the person, they can download it, uh, works really well. Um, I've used it with a lot of people who don't understand how the internet works and they were fine with it. So send you uh, This is how re uh, 25 reasons to convert to Linux. Sort of self-explanatory, a good link to give you a sense of whether or not converting to Linux makes sense to you. As a desktop, I've tried eight times and failed. I hope to try again someday. E Linux, good server, desktop, eh. <laughs> I think I knew what you meant. All right. Uh, my next link is for my current uh, uh, PhD program that I'm taking at Old Dominion University. I think uh, anyone who was around last year at this time remembers uh, the angst <laughs> and then the, everything that I would express each week. I, I was trying to find a PhD a program in um, instructional design or distance education, and I wanted to be able to take it uh, at a distance, and I was unable to do so until I found this program. So I'm loving it. I'm a year, about a year through and all is good, and they also offer a master's program if you're interested as well. So and I just want to point out that that might help you answer one of the questions on the EdTech Weekly 100 quiz, which I'll be oh, putting no. a link into again at the <laughs> end of the show. Uh, this is one of those things that I don't know why it hasn't caught on more. I love this. Riffly.com makes it so easy to add uh, audio or video comments to anything. We have it on EdTech Talk. It's incredibly easy to install on Drupal or WordPress. Uh, anytime you add a comment, there's this option to add audio or video. Uh, and so far, nobody does it on EdTech Talk, but they're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, I'll install it. Jeez. Okay, uh, tiny URL. Uh, this is a concept that's been around for a long time where uh, you have this really long web address and you want to give it to people or send it to people, and it's just too much to type in or too much to copy, and it wraps across multiple lines in an email, so the links never work. And uh, tiny URL is one of several services where you can go and you paste in the link and it gives you a, a much shorter link. It's tinyurl slash uh, dot com slash uh, some code, and you can use that link. I, I never used this before Twitter, um, but since Twitter, I find myself putting it in all kinds of documents. Anytime I need a web address, I'll go to a site like this and, and uh, shorten it. Uh, my next link is to the uh, the original iPhone review from Engadget. Holy wow, is that a good piece of hardware. We haven't really talked too much about mobile learning, but the stuff that we've done with iPhones and iTouches and looking at it, really, it's so good that we're eventually going to have to be using them all the time. And there are so many more reasons to using an iPhone than a, than a laptop or a full-time computer inside of a classroom. Uh, I think it really is a, an industry-changing piece of technology. Yay, iPhone, as much as I hate to say nice things about Apple. And I believe I said that at our Cream of the Crop episode, and John called me a fangirl on that as well. But I agree. Love my iPhone. Mm -hmm. All right, and my next link, it's Sunday night, so we probably have to talk about Athabasca and Terry Anders at some point. <laughs> so I just mentioned before the Kate, my PhD program. They also this fall started a cohort doctoral program, and... Um, Oh, that would have been a fun one to take as well. So if you're interested, I think it's uh, usually about 12 slides per year is their plan. So check it out. Give it a try if you're interested. One of the other programs that drives me nuts is Adobe Reader. I just find it unnecessarily heavy. It's always trying to update itself. I'm not a fan, but I am a great fan of the alternative Foxit at foxitsoftware.com does everything Adobe Reader does, it's just lighter and less annoying. Yay, Foxit. All right. TrueCrypt. I've talked about TrueCrypt at least half a dozen times. TrueCrypt is uh, encryption technology that you can use to encrypt either a volume on your computer or you can encrypt the entire drive. I use it on my laptop. Basically, it's uh, serious high-level encryption. Um, I have to type in a 25 character passphrase in order to boot my computer. Without it, uh, the hard drive looks like scrambled nonsense. So if somebody steals my laptop, they don't have any of the data on it. Um, very good thing to use. I use it on flash drives, anything that's portable, anything that might disappear, anytime I need to protect any data, truecrypt.org, true, yeah, true and it's free. So Jen is out of links. How can that be? I have one more. You know what I thought? I realized I had a, du a duplicate. Okay, I've got two more. Okay, my next one is to the social network map of the world, which we did only a couple of weeks ago, but it is a really cool list of connection-y thingies of all the different social networking softwares that are used in different parts of the world, and really kind of spreads out your idea of just how much social networking is out there and how different it is in, in different locations. So uh, do check it out. It's well worth a look and give you a sense of just the, the, the real breadth of social networking and how different it is in different places. Okay. Um, I believe I was mocked the first time I talked about this link, but I don't care. I'm coming back for more. Um, I love my Bluetooth mouse. If you have Bluetooth on your laptop, please do yourself a favor and get a Bluetooth mouse. And if you're looking for one, here's a great one. I've been using it for a good 18 months. Love it to death. Bluetooth mouse from Logitech. The link says product or page unavailable. Oh, you know what? These are kind of old links. I'm noticing that tonight. I'll try to find a, a more current one. All Let right. Me, uh, um, I'll work on that. Mikogo has become my new favorite desktop sharing tool. We were Yugma fans for a while. We used to Yugma our show. Uh, John used to anchor the Yugma. But uh, I find Mikogo to be lighter. And I've been using it during class, and it hasn't frozen once. It, I haven't had any problems. It allows anyone to kind of pass the desktop. I'm a fan. M-I-K-O-G-O dot com. Mm, Pandora. I love Pandora. I've, and it, I was a relative latecomer to the party here, but basically you go to the site, you type in some artist or some song that you like, and it plays music like that. 
Um, it's not necessarily educational technology related, but uh, whenever I'm listening to music on the computer, I'm far more likely to go to Pandora and listen to stuff. And I hear a lot of things I've never heard before, but a lot of things I like because it's it matches kind of the stuff that I've already entered. Uh, it's my way of listening to music on the web. Um, so check out Pandora before it goes away. Uh, I have two links left on I as I am the start. All the rest of you have two links as well, I think, to get us to 100. Uh, this is a link from eSchool News that talks a little bit about how virtual environment boosts people's reading skills, which is just another example of how the new technologies are starting to come around. The research is coming around, and we're seeing more and more of that all the time. Just a good example of it, and uh, yay, new tech. Okay. Um, somehow I had a duplicate, so I'm throwing this in as a late ad. Um, for a while, we got pretty excited about Digo, which is a social bookmarking site, D-I-I-G-O. Does anyone on this call use Digo? I am a big Delicious fan myself, but anybody use it? Delicious it works nope. for me. Delicious works for me, and I think Jeff mentioned this before we started this show. It's hard to collaborate alone, and all my buds are on Delicious, so that's where I am. But this certainly did get a lot of attention, and I know a lot of ed tech folks you could use it, so I threw it in as a late ad, digo.com. And this is a little bit of an overlap to one of the links Jen mentioned earlier. It's from the same site, but it's the recommended top 100 tools. And I put it in here because there were a number of tools that aren't getting mentioned in this show that deserve to be things like Audacity and... Um, uh, all sorts of Google tools and Ning and this is a really pretty good list they keep it updated on what they consider to be the most important I don't think the ranking is as important as just a way to for people to get oriented into a whole bunch of useful tools all right, I'm putting Times Attack in here, which is from BigBrains.com, because this is something that my kids are actually excited about, and they don't like to learn uh, math facts at all. And uh, basically, it's software that's a 3D environment, and you go through uh, the dungeons, kind of like a first-person shooter, except that in order to get to different places, you have to uh, answer math fact questions. So these are multiplication tables, and kids go through that and can reach higher levels and um, solve different levels and, and get through the program by answering the questions to the math facts. Uh, it's free time, uh, for the basic version. There's also a version that you can purchase to get more levels, uh, bigbrains.com. I'm doing my last link of the night. And as it seems that we have four minutes, I thought I would slow down a little. <laughs> <laughs> My last link is to the EduBlog Awards. We're going to be hosting uh, for the fourth time this year. We're going to be hosting the EduBlog Awards coming up in the next uh, month, month and a half. It is really a fantastic way of finding out what's going on in the industry. Do go check it out. Check out the winners of the old ones. Uh, I'm going to pop in the link to the to the old URL and. and Go if you go through, check your way through the, the the old winners. Go check your way through all the stuff that people have done, and you'll get a the best I think breath of all the best work being done in educational technology online. Uh, yeah, thanks my, very much to Josie Fraser and the team over there for getting that going, and uh, I love it. It'll be fun. Okay, I agree. That's how I met you guys. Even though you didn't mm -hmm. know I was meeting you, I was just listening. But that's how I found out about Ed Tech Talk. So yay. All right, my last link of the night, I thought I would tie in both Delicious, which is the kind of bedrock of our program, as well as edtechtalk.com. And I have um, uploaded back on, I guess it was back in September, an OPML file of all of our EdTech Talk, um, EdTech Weekly Delicious links. And um, if you'd like to download it, you can also then upload it into your delicious account and it's a quick way to populate all 5,500 or so links that we've got in there unless you want to do each one individually which you <laughs> have to do um, but um, that's it I thought that was a great way to, uh, to end EdTech Weekly 100 Wow and I wanted to end on something future looking uh, so Educon 2.1 uh, is ahead a couple months away and this I think showed us the way conferences should be done uh, much as Chris Lehman kind of models uh, how to model a school for the 21st century um, a very kind of open source conference where it, it's an unconference everything was streamed so you could watch I think eight or nine simultaneous presentations 
got the students involved. It is scheduled for January 23rd to 25th, 2009 in Philadelphia, and I, I have no doubt it will be another great uh, place to have the conversation face-to-face -face and share it remotely. And I wanted to end with something a little lighthearted and looking through all of the links we've gone through over the last two and a half years. Um, my favorite uh, humorous link that we had was the Minesweeper trailer, which is from College Humor. And this is just a video um, of a movie about the game Minesweeper, which is just wonderful and hilarious. And we will leave it at that. That is link number 100. And we are at 59 minutes, guys. Wow. If I have anything to say, remember, you can tag your links for us. Uh, we had a lot of links submitted this week and didn't get to any of them, and we'll pick up some of those next week. But if you'd like to contribute links to the show, uh, how can you do that, Dave? You could go to your internets and put FOR4 colon EdTech Talk and add that as one of the tags inside of your delicious account, and those will come right to us. And next week, if we're all still uh, willing, we will be back. At least some of us will be back for EdTech Weekly number 101 when we're going to have 101 links, right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. New somewhat ones. less. New ones. Exactly. Somewhat less than 101 links, but join us next Sunday night for EdTech Weekly 101. Have a good week, everyone. Cheers. Yay. Ooh, that, that was rock solid. Look at that. One hour right on the money. And check out Jeff's uh, uniform for the evening. He's he's definitely dressed for the occasion. You gonna put your your uh, smiling face back on the uStream, Jeff? Jeff. It'll be it'll be coming up in just a minute. There's a little <laughs> bit of a delay. Uh, <laughs> and for those who want to test their knowledge of EdTech Weeklyness, I wanted to put in another link to the EdTech Weekly quiz. Oh yes, you promise. Yeah. Right. Right. We don't have to take this, do we? <laughs> you don't have to, but... What's my name? Dave. Start quiz. MySQL server error. No. No. That's what it says. I'm not getting it. You have to dig it. That's part of the quiz. Oh, Is anyone else getting SQL errors? errors? No. It's working for me. Dave, start quiz. Wow. What browser are you using? Firefox? Hmm. Here's my link to my Logitech mouse. They must not make my exact version anymore, by the way. Uh oh. You have to edit the show. Fix that. I know. All right, take two. Again. Ready? And <laughs> Welcome to EdTech Weekly. <laughs> 101. Link. And you do get a certificate when you finish. It really? It works in Chrome. Oh, Doug only got oh 75%. Gosh. This makes my knees weak. Remember, Jeff, you made me, not made me, you had me take the one <laughs> you gave your students, and I... I, I think you got 33% on that one. It was very bad. Okay, my name. Okay, let me see. <laughs> this is a trick question. All right. I think I got that one right. <laughs> Look at that one. Oh, this is fun. One word. Ooh. Mm. I mm. think, isn't Q4 a trick question? What is Q4? Uh, Jeff occasionally expressed his strong dislike of. What do I have a strong dislike for? Oh, I think, oh, they're two. Six out of eight. <laughs> Six out of eight. You guys failed at Tech Weekly. What did I miss? How can that be? I got seven out of eight. <laughs> well, I think this one is a trick question. No, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I wish to express my displeasure. Yeah, I got the, uh, uh yeah, the questions five, one. five and six. I got five I got, and six correct. What are you talking about? I, I got them both correct, but they were marked incorrect because I put Tom's last name and I put Josephine Eleanor Maud Cormier. <laughs> it said one name. Can I yeah. read? It said one word. I, I put Posey. Jeez. Am I going to get that wrong? Posey's. Okay, which of these? Posey. Posey? No, Posey counts as an answer. There are two possible answers okay. there. The only thing you couldn't do I was, was being complete. 
Yes, John. You were being the third oh little pig. Oh my gosh, let's see. Which of these events took place before EdTech Weekly Zero? <gasps> oh, yes. That's oh. what you get for being the third little pig, John. Anybody uh, in there uh, as a uh, mod? We need to kick someone out. Oh. In the chat. Hey, Jen, can you please oh uh, say bye bye to Party yeah. Man? Oh my, what's Thanks. going on? Oh, that party guy. What's he? He's not a party person. He's not nice. I think he's gone, right? Yeah. Nice one. Amazing. Yeah, That's no, the first time back. this happened in 100 episodes. Back. He's back. All right. Let me, let me just feel like get him back. How do I get him out? Let's see. You right click on him. I kicked him. That's what I do. Already like, did. Oh. Back. Ban IP. Not, not nice. Not a nice person. Oh, the IP's banned now. Um. Send me the oh, IP and we'll for take our care of it. 100th show. All right, I can see people's results. Uh, I'm still oh. protesting. Oops. Lorna only got 50%. I got 50%. 7 out of 8. I bet I got that terrible one about... How do I find out what I got wrong? Hurt Jeff, that person for me, see, will you? Jeff, you, you hate it when people um, don't use headsets when they're calling into the show. I don't strongly dislike them. I mean, oh, I prefer Oh, I the, see. So yeah. the those versus the okay. Just the fact that he said during the show that it was one of the answers. Yeah, I try to give enough. people a hint. I thought that was a bit of a That's giveaway. That's why I wondered. I, 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 but I was. I know he also hates the headset issue. Is Otherwise, I did all right. No, he's always very helpful to the people who call him without a headset. He's always very polite. I don't dislike them. I just prefer that they you wish know, they'd frickin' listen. Actions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can print out your certificate, Jen. Oh, oh she only got sixty-two percent on her first try, but I'm sure she'll do better on her second. I do like this. I mean, for like online quizzes, it's uh, pretty sweet. That is nice. What party van's problem is? John's gonna go search him out on the internet. Go find him. I found him. Huh? Feed him, feed him. Where's he from? New Jersey. <gasps> Tom Probably is Jen's in the neighbor. other room. <laughs> 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 and you can't find the EPC. Hmm. <laughs> Wow, Jen did mention that uh, she goes there during the show, Jen. That, I like that little quiz. What was the one that I just This New Jersey, on? too. Look at that. Say again? Yeah. Comcast. Yep. Uh, they don't have any ports <laughs> open, just in case you were wondering. Comcast is... <laughs> Comcast should be more, um... You saved me the trouble. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know what I bet happened? We're, we're up to 56 viewers, so I suspect we are on Ustream. Maybe we're on the front page of Ustream. And so we probably got some visitors. Oh. Oh, nice. And I just told everyone where I go to school, and... Yeah, where you live. I One, live. eight, six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> Country code zero zero one. <laughs> Let's see if we're on Ustream that TV. Is any, did you check? Or? Oh, I forgot. Can we go back and redo the end of the show? Because I forgot to say what something. Did you forget? I forgot to thank you guys. Because, All right, but first we have to say hi to oh, Doug. You. This is this is really, you know, I'm sorry. one of the highlights of my week. Me too. Aww. I'm sorry. Do that. Can you do that yes. again? I messed. I messed up. I was interrupting you. All right, ready. Never mind. <laughs> We've lost the moment now. I was, oh, you know, man. Forget it. I wanted to give a group hug, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, the the show is, it means a lot to me. and <laughs> keeps me sane. It's the best part of the week, really. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yeah. your uh, Thanks, drafting me and making me do this. Well, do you appreciate you our honesty? Just uh, before I say what I was going to say, or? No. 
Pony see Pony. Pony up. I don't see us, um... We're not on Ustream. Yeah. I don't see us. No. Well, we... We went back down to 35, so... We're off wherever we were. Well, look at oh, Posey, eyes open and. How what? Uh, hello, Mr. Symington. D man, so. Where'd he go? Posey has a friend. Who's Posey's little friend? Hmm. Uh, that's probably cousin Bronwyn. Oh. Or cousin, uh, there's also cousin uh, Nigel in there as well. And in aperitif, is Dave tired? Pensive? He's meh. Looks tired. Uh, no, when you look out the back window through there at my parents' house, it's the ocean that I watched all through my childhood and early adulthood. So there's something very mesmerizing to me in that sort of view there. That's at my parents' place. That's cool. And I was waiting for turkey. Right. Look at that's God's country right there. I'm looking. I was going to say pensive. Ah, oh, there you go. There that he is. Pensive. Congratulations on show number one hundred, you crew. Mr. Symington, great to hear from you. Yay. Oh, Glad we should have thanked Doug and the well. guest. We should have th thanked you and the and the other guest, filler inners too. Thank you. Yeah, it's too bad you're such jerks. You didn't thank. <laughs> 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 yeah, Dave was supposed to, but he must not have thought it was important enough. So we would have forgotten somebody. <laughs> well, exactly. You can't start into that thing, but uh, well done. And uh, yeah, I, I want to recount. If a human had been marking my test, they would have given me a correct score for my uh, exactly my tag for it, for uh, delicious. But John, you do have to read the questions, and it clearly did stay one and two uh, words and uh, whatever. <laughs> what did you put in for the delicious tag? I put a space after the colon, which I think works anyway. Does it? I believe so. I th thought that I've been doing it that way all along for oh, the two really? or three links I've put in. How is Doug World? Uh, doing well. I'm uh, just uh, getting back to uh, a connected state, which I'm looking forward to. Hopefully, uh, the first of November, I'll be back uh, online a little more than I have been, and looking forward to uh, reconnecting. Cool. We've missed you. Yeah. I've missed you guys as well. And uh, sorry to interrupt that uh, heartfelt uh, sentiment, John. There, that was my my fault. Uh, uh, Jeff, no, that's, but the that's welcome right. went. We we needed there. we needed to be interrupted there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll I'll uh, jump out again. But I just wanted to uh, stop in and uh, congratulate you guys on the uh, on the milestone and uh, look forward to the next 100. Feel free to stick around. You can interview sure. us on this auspicious occasion. Okay, so <laughs> get an exclusive. Uh, let's... Let's uh, track it back in terms of John joining the fray. In terms of let's let's elaborate a little bit there on how that all came to be. Yeah. So John, what was, uh, tell us John more was about being a jerk, people. and so we caught, we figured better a jerk in our house than a jerk out of our house. So we invited <laughs> him in. <laughs> no, I, I all I remember <laughs> is that I was listening to the show. I happened to blog. That was actually the second time I had blogged about the show, but that was the one that you guys read. <laughs> And that was the one that was critical, I guess, of, of EdTech Talk, saying I hadn't listened in a while because it wasn't very groundbreaking anymore. And and um, that EdTech Weekly was wonderful. This new Jennifer Madrill, whoever she was, is just bringing <laughs> breathing fresh new life into the into I'm the EdTech Talk community. I didn't. I don't know. I hadn't seen pictures <laughs> at that point. I didn't, see, I didn't know what he was talking about. Then. Yeah, but. Um, you know, then Dave responded, and they talked about. They mentioned it. Jeff mentioned it on the show, and I almost drove off the road when they were talking about me, because you know, Terry Gross never talks to me over the radio. Jimmy Buffett never talks to me over the radio. So Jimmy. it's just kind of a, just kind of a, a surreal experience for someone who had no contact with the community at all. Dropped into, um, dropped into the webcastathon at the end of the year. That was, uh, was six, I think. Um, yep. Talk to you, Doug, and and Jeff. The first time uh, I was on Skype and and on a webcast, and didn't know it because didn't realize Jeff was broadcasting it. So, you know, started showing up, and eventually got told one afternoon that I was on the show and I needed to get some links together. Cool. So, how long was it between that first post and the year the second post, as it turned out, and the and your first show? How long was that gap between those two? Uh, I don't know. Was it? Was it August or September of the following year? And this was in November, so it was almost a year. 
that I was okay. just kind of hanging out. We did the Ustream stuff for, or not the Ustream, the Yugma stuff for a while, and um, a lot of participation in the chat room. I think I might have guest hosted once or twice. I think Chris Kraft was around at that point too, right? Wasn't he hanging out in the chat room a lot at that point? I think no? so. I don't know. I haven't heard from Chris in a while. I don't know how Jen got into this, though. She just appeared one day. Who, me? You. Yeah, how did you uh, join the fray, Jen? Um, you said you met, you met them at uh, uh, the Edu Blog Sphere Awards. I started Only listening, they... yeah. I would listen to De um, Jeff and Dave, and I could never keep them apart. And then... Um... We can't be kept apart. We're in love. <laughs> <laughs> we are one. <laughs> I would listen and go, which one's that? I can't remember. Which, how about that one? Which one's that one? And then uh, it's so I had to funny do a too because we never school. talk about the same things. We don't sound the same. We don't have the same tone. He has that great radio voice. I've got that weird nasally one. I don't understand why this is such a problem. I think well, he doesn't. Jeff, Jeff, why is that a problem? <laughs> <laughs> and now I had been stealing links from Jen's blog oh, right. for a while. She was one of my regular stops to grab links from. And I even left an audio message, which apparently she's taken off her site now, and she never responded to. Um, but I did say thanks for the links or whatever. And then coincidentally, you had posted something on the EdTech Talk site. And I was thinking, why don't we... Because we were still doing just EdTech Talk at that point, but half the shows were kind of interviews, and half of them were the resources... And what I really wanted to just listen to was the fast-paced roundup of EdTech news and resources. And my original thought was, let's just kind of start it, hand it off to someone, and I can just listen to it and find out what I need to know. Um, and this... How's that going, Jeff? <laughs> Give me another 100. <laughs> Next uh, week you're going to do that, right? Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, and You know what, Jeff? I think you, in, didn't you and Jeff, or uh, what's, his, what's that other guy's name, Dave, have a show where you talked about blogs? And I think maybe that was... I had like a John moment where I was on the treadmill and you mentioned my name and I almost flew off the treadmill. <laughs> That's probably about the same time. You just never responded until you finally you did post on the site. And I had... And I did post. You, and it was kind of like, hey, I'm doing this, my, my master's, is there anything I can do with EdTech Talk? And I had had that thought about, hey, let's get that, uh, that hardworking grad student girl to do this new show. And, I remember uh, that. Yeah. Interns. Great. Yep. And um, I think, Jeff, the uh, the delicious folder is all you, right? Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. That was a good idea. That was a very good idea. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And, Jeff, how many shows have you webcast? <laughs> Jeff gets credit for everything. Out of a hundred, yeah, I thought the delicious <laughs> thing was a Dave thing because it sounds like a Dave thing because it's, it's like let's let's have a show, yeah, do. let's have a show without <laughs> any content. <laughs> Let the listeners provide the content. We'll just talk about their stuff. Well, it's genius when you think of it. <laughs> it is genius, pure genius. Jen, I got another question for you. Follow up. What's uh, the reaction to ed tech, if I may use that as a broad term, um, now with your uh, PhD studies versus what you saw at the master's level. Is there more acceptance, less acceptance? Could you compare the two? I'm sorry, is there more what? At, at what level? Uh, acceptance in terms of peers. Um, do people know what you're talking about more than they used to? Oh, no one has a clue that I do. As soon as I tell people, would you like to come on Sunday night or, you know, would you like to listen to something? They have no interest in it whatsoever. So, no. <laughs> of course, <laughs> really you realize Jen's in in a PhD program, but she never goes to class. I don't go to class, yeah. But what I do mention, every time, like, I, when the class starts for the new semester, it's kind of like my rundown. You know, here's what I do, and blah, 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 and I do a show with three guys on Sunday nights. Please join us, and nobody ever joins us. Although you would think being an online course where you meet online and basically do webcast, private webcasting regularly that people would have more of a grasp of it. You'd think, but I, think I got exactly the same reaction in my studies. I couldn't bring people. I offered to do it at a time that was more convenient for them and still was unable to make it happen. So it's interesting, that you, given, as you say, Jeff, that it's online to begin with. I think there's a lot of reluctance to put stuff out there, you know, that you, you right. have a recording of someone saying something and that that exists online forever and it's public and that can come back to haunt you. I think there's... Yeah. 
And I think it's like um, there. video, I think, is, is worse than audio, but audio is bad enough on its own. But yeah, I think it's, I hope it's something of a literacy that becomes more pervasive, but who knows? Hmm. Well, I think it's one of those things until you really experienced it. When you say it, it's like today mm -hmm. I was talking to this woman. I had a, we were looking at some homes, and we were talking to the realtor. I said, oh, I've got to get going. I'm, I'm doing an Internet radio show tonight because I don't ever say a webcast because no one will have a clue what I'm talking about. And just mm -hmm. still that blank stare of, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> How does that I work? go to do that. Yeah. Well, first, first I put my husband in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> Although I see from the quiz that he is allowed out on occasion now. That's great news. That is good news. Tom is happy. Uh, what so about uh, cell phone? Oh, sorry. I... I was gonna... Sure. I heard, um, I heard uh, Jeff and Dave's talking after. Oh, that was... conference in Maine. Yeah. Pa I can't remember which one it was. A really expensive one. Yeah, and somehow or another, um, just commentary based on, on that. And uh, I remember calling in um, just to I, again, it was that same type of thing where these guys said, you know, anybody can participate. So everybody says that, but they actually called me on, you know, they called me on my uh, landline. In uh, so I wasn't even on the computer at that point in time, or wasn't able to, didn't have a mic or any of the rest of it. I think I was just listening on a laptop. So Jeff called me on the telephone, and uh, I was talking to these two characters online, and I thought, uh, from there, these guys are for real. And again, the rest is history. And you've learned better. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you guys are for real because in terms of online communities, different people talk about communities of practice and how do we make them work and all the rest of it. And I don't know exactly what the answers are, but I know that I've seen it happen right here. So. Uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. I noticed we have some newcomers tonight. I just wanted to say hello to all of them, and uh, thanks for joining us, and feel free to ask any questions if you're confused. Oh, and I was thinking at the end of the show, I wanted to ask people to post links or names of things that they thought belonged in our list of the top 100 but weren't included, but maybe it's too late for that. But if we'll anyone wants to toss time. it in there, please do so. There are still 15 people in the chat room. That's amazing. That freaks me out. That freaks me out. So what role do cell phones have to play in all of this? Where's that going? Well, I mean, like I said about the iPhone, it really is, it's such a category improvement from what was there before. As far as I was concerned, as long as we were dealing with little tiny windows, you couldn't really do anything with them. Uh, you know, you can talk about it, you can talk about SMSing and stuff, blah, blah, blah. With the iPhone right now, you can actually really do cool stuff. I mean, essentially all you're talking about is a small tablet. Um, mm -hmm. that happens to be connected no matter where it happens to be, which is really cool. I don't know that that portability makes a massive difference. And I can imagine circumstances where it would, and certainly if you're playing GPS games or, or stuff like that. At the end of the day, I don't know. I mean, the difference between a, a super portable computer, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you take uh, the, the EPC, wherever Jen's might be, but let's assume that she still has one. <laughs> well, that's a problem. Um, They're too small, you lose them. It's like eight inches long, and the iPhone's, what, five? Is yeah. there a big difference between those two technologies? I don't I I mean, think the there is. Certainly different, There's a big but... difference between the, the triple EPC and the, and the BlackBerry to compare two interfaces, because I, I see it myself in terms of degrees of computing, but I think that um, BlackBerry is, is pretty... Uh, pretty robust in terms of what you could do with it but I, I think for me the big thing is the notion of the, the hook for the learner in terms of young people are enamored with cell phones to begin with so why not leverage that no I, I couldn't agree with you anymore it's the same with all the, the trick stuff that we use and it's, once you get out of yeah. once you get out of North America it's all cell phone right I mean mm -hmm. at least that's my impression is that the mobile devices that they're using everywhere else are all tiny little phones with all these capabilities in them. Mm -hmm. Like they can talk to other people. <laughs> <laughs> so what, if anything, do we, uh, how do we see ourselves evolving for the next hundred shows? Anything different? Are we just perfect the way we are? Or uh... I can't imagine a more sustainable show than the one we're running now. Um, I find it, I, I agree with John, I wouldn't want to say it out loud in his presence, but I really love coming to the show, I really like to talk to you guys, and I enjoy this part of the process, I enjoy the interaction with the community, I even enjoy Mrs. Durf taunting me all the time. 
She's sitting in the chat room. <laughs> that was no fun. She's not there. Uh, but I, I really like this part of it. I also really like the fact that I always know exactly what's going on. So I could be in a meeting anywhere, and somebody will go, "I just heard about blah blah blah," and I'll go, yeah. "Well, blah 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 blah." Or yeah. somebody will go, "This doesn't exist," and I'll go, "Well, actually," blah, 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 blah. and that's, I mean, it's awesome. It's so good. You know, it's really true. Like I was watching along in the chat room right now when people were talking about Ning, and it's kind of like a lot of these things we go through phases where we get really really excited. And then you hear six months later someone's had some disaster or, you know, they can't get their data out or whatever it may be. And it's the kind of the, not only just the week by week, but you get to watch these technologies progress over time and how they work for people. And that part is, I think, invaluable. That's what kind of got me thinking about that question, too, was the comment in the chat room about anybody know a good guide to social networking. And I think it's important for us to kind of revisit the basics periodically. Um, I thought this show was was kind of interesting and, and useful. And I don't know, it might be worth considering uh, having more uh, every 20th show or something, a little bit something more specific, a little bit thematic. I, I, our social I liked, networking links are. I like the concept of cream of the crop that we did last year where we just said, here's the best way to do X, Y, Z. Um, and I think that we don't necessarily do enough of that. And I don't know that on this show we look at all of these tools in enough depth to be able to to say, well, well this is the way to do this. Look at the links that she talked about. <laughs> she didn't even, she didn't even know if they worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even, I love it. Oh, it's too funny. It's almost like you need to talk about the use of the tools as distinguished from the tools themselves, right? Well develop a certain fluency or literacy with these tools that one is much the same as the next in terms of our approach well, right. to it, if you will. Right. But I think it you know, we also have a role to to just kind of explain what or or tell people what we think the best tool is. Um, for example, I threw in the link to send you it tonight and, you know, a couple of people in the chat room said, Well what about you send it? That does the same thing. And I don't know enough to say, well, yes, here are 27 tools that do exactly the same thing, and here are the mm -hmm. nuances. Here's the one that you know allows a bigger file size, or here's the one that will let you keep it up there for a month instead of just two weeks. And that's probably stuff that you know, would be useful if we were able to provide it. The problem is that those tools are always changing and always evolving, and so keeping up with something like that is, is difficult. Even and having I I questions answered regularly, and, I mean, we've asked for questions before, and we we never get them, but if, if we did, um, it would be great to kind of toss out basic newbie questions, not just to the four of the four hosts, but to the whole community around this show, just to periodically provide feedback to some of those basic questions. I think I think there's something to that, but uh, the way that John just described the show, I think, is the way we need to be dealing with technology. The answer, as soon as you give the answer, is going to be out of date as soon as it gets crystallized. And I think mm -hmm. that that's really kind of the wrong way to be looking at this. I, what I really like about EdTech Weekly from uh, a philosophical perspective is it, it treats technology exactly the way I think it should be treated, which is we're constantly talking about the best we know right now. And the, the best way to kind of keep up to date with all of the things that are going on is to just kind of immerse yourself into this discussion. And in that discussion, you come out with a pretty good idea of where that is, whereas it's far better to go out from there to the specialists to give you the kind of specialized information that John's talking about. If you really need to carve your way through the seven different kinds of software that will encrypt your USB stick, you really shouldn't be talking to me. You know? <laughs> yeah, but, but at the other on the other side of that is that if you're always revisiting and always trying to stay current and, and re looking at re examining everything, then you're always answering the same questions. You know, I, I much prefer you know what, we decided to use WordPress for blogging and I don't care about blogging software anymore because I've already decided that WordPress is good. And maybe in two or three years I'll look at it again, but I don't want to hear about like every new blogging platform that comes out. Um, because I'm on to other things. I'm trying to solve different problems and, and moving on to other stuff. Why so are you make... so grumpy? Why don't you want to hear things? <laughs> I just don't want to continually solve the same problems. You know, Don, to your point, it's really true because we, we have right now we're just shy of 5,500 links in um, Delicious. And so when we went through to pick our top, each of us signed our top 25, I was kind of struggling by the end because it's like you said, you really – 
the ones that you actually really use on a daily basis, it's not that many, even though we yeah. got a yeah. blah, blah, blah about them every week. Well, Most I went them, through and anything that I couldn't remember was immediately off the list, <laughs> which mm -hmm. uh, narrowed it down considerably. And then, you know, from there it was, what are the themes running through this? What are we always talking about? We're always talking about copyright. We're always talking about little laptops. We're talking about, you know, all these different things. And then it's what what's the best link to represent that discussion that we're having on an ongoing basis. But just because it's old hat to us doesn't mean there isn't part of the audience that is just taking their first steps into this. And even if it means rehashing some of the stuff we've discussed, I think there might be value in doing a cream of the crop or a back to basics episode periodically just kind of to help orient people who are just taking yeah. those first steps. I think, Ed, I think Ed Tech Talk should do that. I think we'd be far better off not thinking about that as an EdTech Weekly job, try to get the whole friggin' slew of people together once every three months and mm -hmm. do that. I think yeah, that'd be a fun. really cool idea. Or even even six months. Yeah, and no, just get I mean, all the show, every show host we can find, find a platform that'll allow us to record the 15 of us trying to talk, or 20 or how many people show up, <laughs> trying to talk over each other all the time and just let it go. You know, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Because certainly, be if fun. you take all of the EdTech talk hosts, and you put them all into a big bucket, you've got a, you got, you get a lot of experience in there. There's a lot of people who know, who are doing real stuff in real classrooms. And, you know, some people are just taking their PhD, but there's people actually working. So, <laughs> zing. <laughs> wait, wait. Do any of us have Maybe. real jobs? Come on. <laughs> well, there you go. Maybe we can take a page out of Alan Levine's book, uh, Cog Dogs, and do the 50 ways to tell a story, like 50 ways to share a screen or, you know, whatever the number is, and have categories maybe with links. And See, I'd, I'd rather have one way or two ways, you know, out of 50, saying we looked at 50, here's, here's the ones that you want to pay attention to, and then 50 ways to do, you know, I don't know, something else. And I, I, my sense is that's how he does it in terms of these are all of them, and, and I don't know whether right. they're actually a ranking or chronological or whatnot, but that way at least you cover off on that question, you know, I'm already using this, will it do the same thing? Right. I don't know. Right. I'm curious, for any kind of newbies in the chat room, or, or we've all been newbies at different times, we all still are newbies at certain things, what do people want? What would be most helpful for people who are taking those first steps into the world of ed tech or, or whatever? What kind of media, live or recorded, would be most useful? Poor Jeff. He keeps trying. <laughs> and, <laughs> and every time. But that's okay. He keeps <laughs> swinging. It's part of his charm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what got us to this point. That's right. Mm, yeah. Oh, I like the, the concept of uh, uh, sort of a best of show, an ed tech talk show um, that Dave was talking about, you know, maybe doing something like that as, I don't know, an Equinox thing so that we have enough time to put it together and nail it down. And I think that's a great idea, Dave. Dave's in Shut charge. up. Since he he, inad he inadvertently. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, see, that's March, so we have tons of time. No, the solstice. I, we got to do something for December. I didn't we... say solstice. He said solstice equinox. is right around the corner. Yeah. Solstice. Actually, the solstice idea, Jeff, technically speaking, is yours now. You <laughs> well, that's like a solstice webcast-a-thon. Yeah, that's thing. all about you. Webcast-a-thon. That's, that's very bridges, Jeff. I think, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah wow. for sure. But once you drink the yeah, or yeah. What did you say, Madril? You haven't done a webcast of found in the wild. Right no, now. kind of bailed on the last one. It's just spread a little too thin. Yeah. And those Earthcasters will be. <laughs> 23 hours. Yeah. And we, you know, the Webcast Academy has kind of uh, hit a lull. We had originally thought of getting some going uh, October, November. Uh, we need to recruit some talent. Speaking of that, what are we going to do next Sunday? Are you just going to get the stream going before you go on your date? Nope. <laughs> because it's the show starts at, uh, I think, 7.30. We're going to do dinner beforehand. and nope. uh, It'll be fine. 
Jen, you you know how to webcast. You just don't like the echo. Um, I don't. I can't multitask nearly as well. I'm like, yes, pass. <clears throat> Sorry. What is that? What is that? So, eight days, three hours, and a couple of minutes, eh, hey guys? Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Big decisions to be made. I'm Easy decisions. Easy decisions. Can't decide at all what I'm going to do. Oh, wait a minute. That's Ohio and New Hampshire. How can you not <laughs> decide? Yeah. <laughs> Where is Ohio? What, what's the, I, I keep picking on Jeff, but Ohio is just as close, isn't it? We're right down uh, the street from you. Ohio? Are you talking geographically or politically? Um, poll wise. Ohio is closer. New Hampshire is kind of broken. Let's see, Johnny. Do you have to go up and down the street? Real quick, no, politics. the okay. candidates are here doing that. Uh, I, can, tell me what the robocalling is like, please. What's it like to get we a robocall? We don't robo get call? it. I'm in a democratic state. Or, so I don't no, but John's got to be getting robocalls. Nope. He must have be. We None. had uh, robocalls here in Canada on uh, Vancouver Island. There's some controversy, actually, and uh, a criminal investigation underway about robocalling here on Vancouver Island. You're kidding. I am not kidding at all. Uh, 4,000 people were called and told to vote for a candidate who had withdrawn from the race. Oopsie. <laughs> Ooh. Oops. Ouch. Not only robocalling, but stupid. We well, actually, actually it was, haven't gotten very many at all um part of it is that we don't have a landline but um i don't oh, know it hasn't right. been too bad according to the polls i'm looking at uh ohio is is uh, uh new hampshire is closer than ohio what are you looking at this says ohio is 53 41 which i don't believe but so our um do the do not call list apply to the robocalling thing, or is it different because it's a political process? One doesn't way affect or... doesn't in Canada it doesn't affect political process. Hmm. Is that the same state side, John? I don't I don't know. I thought it did apply actually, but I'm not sure. I got nine for New Hampshire and six for Ohio, but that's an aggregation. In some are kind of goofy. I feel like one? the country is so ready for this election to be I done. <laughs> it's like a reality show that we've been watching for two years, and we're just ready for that final episode. So what's, like, Jon Stewart going to do the next day after the election? <laughs> <laughs> I'm more worried about Tina Fey other than have a nap. Yeah. Co comedians are going to be in serious trouble if Obama wins. He's just not as funny as Bush or Clinton or McCain or Palin. Uh, how are they going to replace Cheney? It. They'll do yeah. it. Yeah. They can make fun of Biden. Biden will help, yeah. 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 Folks, I'm about ready to wrap here. Yeah, it sounds like we're all about to fade away. So, um, lovely chatting, folks. Yes, indeed. And congratulations again. Thanks. Thank well, you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. And uh, save this audio. Oh, Get I forgot there. to record. Start again. Okay, ready? Bye. Action. <laughs> Have a great time. week, everybody. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye, everybody. See ya. Bye.